Oh, this thing full of goodies. Oh my goodness, there's jewelry in here. Oh my, look at that. How do you cousins? It's Rusty. I'm in here on a Saturday. I'm about ready to get working. And uh, I've checked my phone and there was a voicemail from Peaches. Uh, he had to be out of town this weekend, um, and so he left me a few things to go through. So before I get into my work today, I thought I'd dig through uh, this container that he left, show you the goodies he got, and I'll be able to tell you if he did a good job or not, tell you what I think the value might be, and maybe you could learn something. Let's try it out. A one and a two and a three. Rusty the reseller, he'll sell you the shirt off his back. <laughs> well, I have done it. Real fast, while I'm going out looking to grab this uh, container and bring it up to an area where we can look at it, let me go ahead and play you that voicemail so you can hear exactly what Peaches uh, said to me this morning on the phone. Hey, Rusty. Peaches here. I dropped some stuff off at the warehouse that I picked up recently, outsourcing, but uh, so I left it there. Feel free to go ahead and jump into it, but uh, if not, I'll get to it on Monday. All right, take care. All right, here she is, folks. I brought this stuff up here into one of our uh, nap rooms. Uh, just when when staff sometimes get a little bit uh, tired, a little bit nappy, they can come in here and rest. It's kind of like a, a high-end uh, airport, you know. Um, but i uh, got a bunch of stuff in here. We're going to go through. First off, though, I want to show you this. This is the only thing I want to show you today that I just picked up. And then we'll get into the stuff Peach has got. Uh, folks, I had to buy this because it is so bizarre. If you've watched any of our videos in the past, you'll know that buying stuff that is eccentric, strange, oddities, bizarro stuff, it sells really well. Uh, now, if, if what you're looking at here and thinking is... Uh, that this is crazy and also a little bit disgusting. You are not far off, folks. Um, what we have here is a rusted blade of a machete, okay? And on the handle and on the sheath here, you have um, legitimate, actual snake skin, okay, that has over time uh, dried and tightened up and, and started to detach from the sheath itself. You have this machete here. You have this knife that's also attached up here. If I pull this out, another small knife here, and you can kind of see it's a brand that says, uh, it's an I Inox, Enix, I-N-O-X, uh, uh, Mundial, Brazil, okay? Actually looks like a decent blade. Uh, I've come across that the Mundial before on uh, certain uh, blades before uh, in other um, types of cutlery. So super bizarre. I'm going to try to slide this back in here. But what you're also looking at here are right here. These are rib, actual rib bones from a snake. And then these pieces here on the ends are actual pieces of the vertebrae from a snake. So we have uh, bones and the skin of a snake on this sucker. Um, really bizarre. I bought this at an estate sale for $35. I paid a little bit up for it because it's so strange. My guess by looking at it, because it's not well-made, folks. This is not uh, a great well-made thing. This is all almost like clay, and it's been painted. Now, these are not jewels. They're made to look like jewels from a distance. Um, to, my guess is this was made as some sort of a souvenir uh, trinket-type gift for someone who was visiting uh, a place in Brazil to buy. Now, I could buff out. I mean, I just did this. Actually, I'm going to show you at the end of this video um, some uh, oyster knives. They're uh, forged steel from early 1900s that I just refinished. Um, so stick around at the end of the video. I'll show you those. They're beautiful. Uh, but this is Tramontina. It's a type of machete. It's from Brazil. I think that that's what this was. Uh, I'm not sure what it'll bring, but I'll certainly let you know when I sell it. We're getting into this stuff that Peaches has bought, and I, I'm hoping, it looks like I received this, I was hoping that there'd be some um, prices on this so we can talk about the value. So uh, those of you who know already uh, will know what this is. Um, those of you who don't, you, it's uh, something I only learned about in the last couple of years, but it's a type of... Um, a, a glass called what they call uh, Vaseline glass 
or uh, it's commonly known as uranium glass. It's a very green tint, and they come in a couple of different colors. This green and yellows are about the most common. Uh, and he paid $1.99 for this, which is pretty fantastic. Um, and uh, this stuff, if you put it under fluorescent light, it just glows beautifully. If you get in the dark and then you put a, a, like a black line on it, it is incredible. Um, it's called uranium glass because, believe it or not, there is uranium in it. This is uh, early, uh, you know, kind of 1900s, we're talking. Um, there was a period of time when this was heavily used. It's not really produced anymore. It's a vintage piece. Um, this is probably twenty to thirty dollar piece right here. I've actually not seen this kind of ribbed design before. I don't know if this is a vase, probably something like that. Uh, but two ninety nine, that's a great, a great price. Uh, kicked off really well here, peaches. Let me just grab these because they're large and they're on top. All right, these are nice. And uh, all right, eight dollars. I imagine got these from Goodwill. They love to do that. I hate, I wish they didn't do that. I wish they just put a. Sometimes they just put stickers on them, color stickers, but if they're at higher price, like this would normally be like $5.99 or something, but um, I guess they realize too that they're in really nice condition, $8, still a great deal because this is the uh, brand Ultra, and these are like um, running, trail running, hiking type shoes. Uh, they're smaller, so I'm guessing that these are women's. Yeah, women, seven and a half U.S. size, which is a pretty good size. Uh, you know, most adult women are in that kind of seven to eight and a half to nine range right so seven and a half is not too unusual uh, and they are fantastic condition they may have only been worn once or twice i mean they're beautiful these are probably folks i'll probably get um you know between 50 and 60 dollars for these used because they're in such good condition these would be probably 80 or 90 dollar shoes i don't know exactly i've not um looked but um that's a great score for eight bucks all right he has not missed yet. What do we got here? A little box. Uh, it's in a Singer box, sewing accessories. Whoa, now that is not sewing material. Look at this. $5.50. Uh, that is beautiful wood. Look at that. I wonder what that is. It almost looks like a, like a burl type of a wood or... Uh, you know what it makes me think of with those little knots and patterns is uh, briar wood that pipes are made out of. But this is a beautiful wood. I don't know what kind it is. I'm not sure what this is. I don't know if this is... Uh, it's not really that sharp. Oh, that's a little sharp on that side, not on this side. So this is either also a type of an oyster knife. This might be something for leather, uh, to cut leather or to work. It's some sort of more... It's obviously a blade, but this is made with a very distinct purpose i would guess some sort of a it's got a nice little rest for your thumb there uh for carving something but that's cool 550 oh yeah this is i mean this is probably a 15 20 dollar or more knife uh, i don't see a brand on it which is unfortunate but uh huh there is a number one look at that right there in the in that little brat there number one well, we'll have to look that up. That's cool. Maybe Peaches knows about it. I mean, he is a PhD after all. Um, you know, I feel like uh, he's definitely my protege. I've, I feel like I've taught him a lot. And um, he just doesn't talk all that much. He's got a lot He's got a lot of, in his brains, uh, you know, but he doesn't uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe I talk too much. All right, let's look at this here. This is $2.75. Well, I know what this is. Do you guys know what this is? Uh, man, it's beautiful condition. List Finder Model A by the Bates Company. Let's pop this sucker open and you'll see. Push this button. Whoa, let's try that again. You ready? Bam. <laughs> Bates List Finder Model A. If I pull this out here, you'll see that this is... It's kind of like uh, you could put phone numbers in here, lists of of people or dates or places. You could keep all kinds of information in this. What's it say on the back here? Model finder to remove cards for typing or replacement, set pointer at A. So you can take these out. You can type on them if you want to. Um, I have bought and sold these in the past. These are gonna, this is a really great condition. Uh, one in very good condition. Um, it's brown. They come in different uh, colors. There are different types out there. Spring, the spring works really well. It looks like it, and it has not been used at all, which is great. This is probably a $25 to $35 item, and he paid $275 for it. Good for you, Peaches. All right, I see some stuff. I'm just going to grab it. I'm going to grab, uh, what do we got here? That's probably, 
some piece of jewelry. Oh, man, look at this jewelry. Pull that. Pocket watch. So, okay, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna try to get the jewelry and stuff here. We'll go over all this together. I don't want to go into jewelry and then do other stuff. So, um, what is this? Well, this is very interesting. Uh, I can't tell what a price would have been, so I don't know what he paid for it. But this is obviously a little uh, air made to look like an airplane, clearly, like an old school airplane, and it's. Uh, my guess is this is an artisan uh, custom piece. Um, it's a little worn and rusted up. It could definitely be polished, I'm sure. But look at this. This thing has been welded together out of scrap metal parts and, uh, you know, tool pieces. Like, you got a big um, nut here. And in the back, where, where the fence would be, are, are washers. And these are all just pieces of... Um, I don't know, tin maybe, aluminum something. Uh, but that's a that's cool. This is a really cool uh, thing you could put up on like a bookshelf or something. Uh, shoot, we might even keep that. I don't know. That's neat. That might have been an impulse buy on his part. I'm not really sure. Um, but uh, and then oh look at this. This is great. Good for you, Peaches. You know what he did? He he went and donated some stuff as well. Um, and folks, that's a really good point. We buy stuff at Goodwills and Salvation Armies, and we spread the love around different places. Um, I'm not saying that this is like the greatest place in the world, but what I am saying is we have bought a lot of things here um, in similar places. We prefer our local uh, non-chain places, but we like to not only buy stuff at these places, but we like to donate as well. And so, uh, folks, you know, spread the love around. If you got some stuff, it's good to donate as well as buy. Now, I've got a bunch of these, a bunch of these little um, silver, let's see, what do we got here? It says community all right so community a literal community plate <laughs> here he paid three dollars for that it was another beautiful one these don't look like they've ever been hardly used what's what's the brand of this sucker here towel ep that stands for electro plated so this is not sterling silver it is silver plated but these are all silvery color because they do have silver content um, on the outside of them three dollars for those as well what do we have here? Do we have a brand? Folks, do we have a brand? I'm not seeing one here. It's on the outside. They put them in different places sometimes, folks, and it's hard to find. Well, maybe this one doesn't have it. It's still nice looking. I'll tell you that right now. $3. It's a very large one. And then here's the largest of the lot. $2 for this one. Wow. And what do we got here? 114. Um, are we seeing any sort of... Oh, there we are. Rogers. Do you see this right here? Rogers. Boom. $2. Two, five, uh, eight. What we got here? $11 for all of these, folks. I probably wouldn't have advised him not to mess with it if it was just one. But the fact that he got... Four different pieces, different sizes, different shapes uh, for eleven dollars. I think that was a really good purchase because um, you can you can sell them all as one. You can sell them individually, obviously, but I wouldn't waste the time with it personally. I would just sell them all together, and uh, as a lot, this could go for forty or fifty dollars or more, uh, given the fact that they're all in such nice condition and some of those names are very well known as far as silver plate. Uh, stuff is concerned. We don't do a lot of this because it's a large, a lot of times we stay with smaller things um, like jewelry and stuff. But, uh, but you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to frown upon it. We'll make some money on it. Oh, look at there. Look at this, what we got here. <clears throat> okay, we got some cool stuff to go through here, folks. All right. Peaches, man, you, you really hit the mother load. I wonder if he went to just one spot or if he hit soon. We'll have to ask him this. Where he went because this is look at this just so much jewelry here all right let's get you know, let's go through here okay i'm seeing some similar items i'm going to pull all these out real quick and we're going to we're going to work on them and we're going to move them i should have i should have done this i was not i didn't know what we had here so all right so i'm going to pull these out uh man there's just oodles of them okay we're going to go through scissors here got a bunch of scissors i can't see is there the name there there he is 
Oh my goodness, I can't actually see what it says. Hmm, I can't tell what that one is. This is a really cool pair. Uh, and these say, you see that right there? That's cool. It's in Cleveland. Do you see the gold color on the inside of those? You see that? These would have one time had that gold color all over the handles and they have worn off over time. Or maybe they were gold plated in that and someone has removed the gold at some point. Clear Cut is the brand right there by my thumbnail. Look at that gold color on the inside. These would have been very pretty at one time. Still cool and ornate. I believe he told me that the, it would have been this, the thing with most of the tools and stuff in it. He said that everything, he paid $30 for everything in this container. Everything I'm pulling out in there. He said there were about 30 items. He walked up there and they, uh, it was kind of one of those you negotiate and uh, they said, how about $30? And he said, sold. So we'll see. So he got some other scissors here. Now, why scissors, folks? Well, why not? I mean, you can make money on these. Even though they're vintage and old, there's a collector market for old scissors, certain brands. Klaus with a C. That's an old German brand. Those sell. Uh, look at these. They got an interesting uh, notches in the side of them there. Uh, Klein. Now, there's a, there's a brand. Folks, I sold a pair of pliers. Klein brand pliers about a month ago for $150. Vintage pliers. Pliers! $150. You never know, folks. Here's an old pair of uh, uh, pliers, and this is a Boker brand, another great brand. Um, he got some really good, I'm, I'm seeing why I did this here, Forge Steel USA. These are vintage. I don't see a, I don't see a brand on them. But just like these oyster knives I'm going to show you later in the video, uh, these can be refinished, folks, brought back to life. They can be, um, look at that, something, De Boer and Bach. Uh, company. These can be, uh, you know, sharpened and brought back to life and people will buy these. There's a, there is a collector market for um, scissors. Let me get the rest of these little hand tools out here. Got a bunch of these. So we got, we basically got hand pliers. We got snips. We got a variety of things here. New Britain. Okay. And those look, those look pretty darn nice, honestly, by themselves. Look at this. Now this is cool. These look like the kind of things that pull someone's tooth out back in the day. And someone has bent, either accidentally or possibly in, uh, in, uh, on purpose, bent this piece up. But it's genius. Look at that. It's perfect. It's perfect. And it keeps your hand from slipping down. I love that. Um, how cool. Another nice pair of, of, uh, of pliers here, small pliers. which can be easily uh, cleaned up. And then some little uh, some little snips here, some little cutters. Um, Newark, New Jersey. Okay, that's cool. I love these old tools, folks. Maybe it's boring to some of you, but I think that they're pretty cool. Here is a nickel a nickel plate beer. Uh, Saint Livre, Fort Wayne. So it's an old church key. It's an old. Uh, uh, bottle opener with a nice branding on that. I wonder if that's cool. Each of these things cost a dollar, folks. A dollar. It's not much of an investment. So if you don't sell them for a ton of money, it's okay. You'll make your dollar back easily. Tactico and Elegante. Nice. Oh, wow. This looks like it may never have been used before. The first production run. Okay, so we got a first production run of a really nice pocket knife here. Man, one dollar? Are you kidding me? What do we got here? It says 1045 German Stainless Steel Limited Edition. Oh, nice. Designed by a certain person. Okay, so that's going to... I have no idea. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that brand, but what a steal there, Peaches. Okay, let me get this. Still cutting through here. Um, oh, what do we got here? Well, okay, stop that, Rusty. We're not doing the jewelry yet. Put this stuff over here, pesky jewelry. So we've got some old locks. Let me grab these. Locks are among things that people collect. Rusty uh, uh, fancies himself as a little bit of a, a lock picker. Um, I practice that from time to time, and it's kind of fun. Jaeger, all right. And then Corbin, made in the USA. A couple of brass uh, locks here. No keys, so I'll have to mess around and see if, if, I, if old Rusty's able to open those up. Um, 
And then we got one right here. It just says U.S. on it, which is pretty cool. And I wonder, is this a, uh, this is one of two things. Look at the key. Junkunk Brothers. <laughs> Interesting. My guess is this is either, what's the brand here? This, what does that say? It just says American, I guess. Uh, American. Um, this is either a post U.S. Postal Office uh, lock or this is a military-related thing. I can't think of why else it would just say U.S. on it, um, but I'm not sure. And this, you know, this is bound up. I might have to do something to try to, to try to unbind that, but it does have the original key, but I can't. Look at that. It doesn't turn. Um, still, for a dollar, put those in a lot, you're going to make three, more than $3 off of that, I guarantee you. Really cool, um, I guess this would technically be considered a cold chisel. Cleco brand, it says there. You would hammer on this side, and you would put this down like this or like that, and you could, uh, like, remove... I mean, there's lots of uses for this. Uh, masons could use this. You could use this to just remove, say, tile on the floor or something. And this is forged steel, folks. This is not going to easily get damaged. It also has this little indentation here, and I'm not sure why that is. Perhaps this bit was made in some way in order to um, lock into some sort of specific type of tool, uh, electric tool or, or something that this was a bit for. But you could certainly use it by itself if you wanted to. And here we have a nice little old crowbar, which is cool. Sam Phillips, Coffeyville, Kansas. Well, that's cool. Coffeyville. It's a small little town in Kansas. Um, so they have their own branded crowbar. I mean, here's the deal, folks. All of this stuff, like I said, was $30. I bet this crowbar could sell for $30. I don't know because I've never uh, looked it up. But things that are, I guarantee you, they're not a lot like that out there. And, uh, I suspected, and I was right, this is a straight razor. Really rough condition uh, case. It's been uh, bound multiple times. What, do we, what does it say here? Is this the branding uh, on it? It says Wilson, folks. Wilson. And this is old. This is old. Okay, well, we got, I gotta be careful. I don't want to cut myself with a rusty razor blade here. Flip this puppy over. Good news is that the handle doesn't, I don't see any cracks in it. Um, definitely could use some cleaning, but no cracks. These things are fairly brittle, uh, some of these. Um, what do we got here? I can't quite read the name or what it says on there, but up here, it says the Imperial Razor Company, New York, Germany, registered, and you got patent number there. So this could be cleaned up and uh, revealing that name. It's pretty cool, folks. A dollar for that? Uh, yeah. All day, every day, folks. Easy stuff. This was a this was a really nice lot score that uh, the peaches managed to to find here. Okay, we're, we're we're getting to the end here of this lot. Walsco rule. So it's a a round uh, measuring tape is my guess here. Yeah, kind of that metal Walsco, and it comes out. And does it go back in? Yep, no problem. So, could be in better condition, but it's old, folks. Somebody will pay for that. A bunch of old keys. Keys that go to who knows what. Why would somebody on eBay buy these? Well, guys, you'd be surprised. Right here is a, is a car key. Now, it says P98A, B48. I have no idea, but it says for General Motors cars. This is a GM, General Motors car. It's bent. <laughs> DL, I, I don't know. Do you anybody out there know? Here's another one. GM, it's another car key. A bunch of mark of excellence, a bunch of GM car keys. Here's some smaller ones made in Hong Kong. That looks like it goes to some sort of key, uh, most likely, uh, or some key, some kind of lock. Um, that's the that is the key. Um, Parker, L. Parker, another brass. Uh, Lindor, Lender, cylinder, brass cylinder, Hong Kong, and then what's this last one we got here? Star, fifty-eight oh one. There's some numbers here too, guys. I don't know anything about these keys, but all the time there are people out there who lose keys to certain things, vintage things, and guess where they go to try to find replacements? eBay. 
They just look for it. I've got dozens upon dozens of keys in my eBay store right now at like $14 to $20 a piece. And it might take months, but someone's going to come along and buy it. I sold two last week that had been up for months. It didn't change the price. That right buyer just hadn't come along yet. So he got this for a dollar. So each one of these keys here, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we're 20 cents in on each of these keys, right? Uh, that'll be an easy sell. Last few items here. That's going to be a fun one to go through. We've got a little pocket knife here. What do we have? Looks like a knife that's missing the plastic... Um, or the faux plat, like whatever, the, you know, it was maybe like made to look like wood or maybe it was black or something. The outer part of this knife, and it's all rusted as well, but certainly could be uh, cleaned up. We'll probably do that along with these other um, pieces of, uh, of tools over here. Made in Germany, that's pretty good. Well, we don't know the brand, folks. I don't see the brand unless it's on the blade someplace. Nope. But it's an old German-made knife. They made good tools and made good knives back in this era, for sure. And probably still still today, although I don't know um, the newer stuff as well. Because I just spend my time dealing with antiques and collectibles. That's what I do. A couple of these. Now, these have better be good brands or else it's probably not worth it. Okay, what do we got here? 5212 Proto. All right, good. So, Proto. So, a few out there, guys. Um... Plum, P-L-U-M-B, uh, Proto, right here is a good one. Um, Snap-on brands, um, Craftsman, especially if you ever get Craftsman's. Craftsman's have a little letter in them. Sometimes it's a V, sometimes it's a, uh, a double E, sometimes it's a whatever, right? There's different letters uh, for different sets and eras. Um, if you ever come across the Craftsman ones that have the letter C, the letter C, folks, look for those. Um, the, what well, was essentially the first run of these socket sets from Craftsman, and they can go for insane amounts of money on eBay. All right, what do we got here? All right, so snap on, man, well done. Snap on, man, he's a, uh, that peaches, man, he knows what he's doing. So snap on, uh, brand this, I mean, this right here could sell for 20 bucks even in its rusted condition. And this uh, Proto one, probably 10 to $15. I bet the $30 of this whole lot could be sold off of these two. You're saying, no way, Rusty. Look them up. Look them up. Proto, Snap-on, Plum. Um, what are some others? There are others, folks. I need to, I'll think on it. But, uh, okay, let me, let me, uh, let me get this, let me dump this sucker out here and see what he has found. All right, I got it open. $1 here. One dollar for this whole bag. Now let's see what he found. I'm gonna go through this real quick, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna try to quickly separate out as I look at it, and we'll look at the stuff that's better versus worse. Okay, I'll put this here. Do -do 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 just imagine some sort of um, you know, old uh, NES Nintendo game um, music, you know, playing, and uh, as I sort these really fast. And this is just a cursory glance here. But you got to learn how to go through this junk fast, folks. Because when you're out looking, uh, you got to... What is that? Interesting. You've got to be able to, to determine if something's going to be valuable or not. And then just move on. Move on if it's not... Um, you don't, don't wait around because there's other people out there. I tell you what, the uh, competition is getting so fierce and difficult these days to make a good buck that uh, you really got uh, to run. Uh, to try to get the stuff. Okay, so now some of these might be more valuable, but I think these are going to be the most valuable ones. So let's look at them real quick. So this one is just, it's a dress, not real valuable. Here is uh, a, a cow, Prince Edward Island. Okay, all right. Look at that. Someone who want, cares about Prince Edward Island will get that. Here is something with like a red, you can kind of see that. And it says USA, and it's some sort of brand, maybe Avon or something like that, a costume jewelry brand. Um, we got McDonald's. McDonald's stuff sells. I've still got some pins left from a large pin co uh, collection that I bought last year. Um, special Mother. We got Mother's Day's coming up, folks. Somebody might want to get that for old grandma or something, right? Uh, you never know. And uh, so North Carolina, there's a lighthouse there. I'm in North Carolina, so that makes sense where that came from. Um, mother again. Well, let's just put up some mother pins. 
angels. This is like Mother's Day, Mother's Day special here. A little apple. You could give that to a teacher, a little strawberry maybe. Um, a thumbs up. What's this for? What is this a thumbs up for, folks? One year. Oh, nice. So this is a McDonald's pin for a, for a, an employee completing their first year. That will sell. I guarantee it. That's not made of anything special, so it's not. Here's a realtor one. A realtor out there might want that. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to make more than a dollar off of this. Any one of these could sell for a dollar by itself. That's why it's easy to buy these lots. I didn't see what it said on the back of this, but it does have a mark. I'll have to look at it later. It's either manufacturer or it's indicating that that's made of some sort of precious metal. This one just has the appearance of, to me of sterling silver. Um, I will double check that in a little bit, but it's just cool. It's got the eagle with the double head there. It says uh, it has the number 32 on it, uh, if that means something to any of you. Um, this one here, I knew that was going to be worth something because you can see those gemstones in there. On the left, it looks a little purple. On the right, it looks pink. So my guess is on the right, you have a pink uh, sapphire. On the left, you have maybe amethyst, the Tandy Corporation. This is, and you can see that it's open in the back there. Those are genuine uh, gemstones. They're probably uh, cultured gemstones um, or lab created, I guess I would say, gemstones. But they are gemstones nonetheless, and so there's value in that. Doggone you, get off of there. Let's see what it says. CFJ. And then it says one tenth 10k. So 10% uh, of this is 10 karat gold, and then you have a couple of gemstones. I come across these a lot from uh, old uh, companies, used older, I say older companies. Uh, in yesteryear, companies would um, honor their employees who, who they, you know, stuck around and worked for years. And over time, they would give them awards like this. Um, with little, uh, sometimes, you know, they get nicer, you know, stones, more gold or things over time. And I apologize, my fingers are real dirty because I was out cleaning those tools a little bit ago. So here's another one with a, with a, a stone. It says WWJD. You guys remember the WWJD uh, uh, fad, right? What would Jesus do? And uh, so it's a TM, trademarked. Somebody did trademark that, that, that uh, phrase, and they made a lot of money off of it, for, for sure. Um, there's a stone. I don't know if it's real or not. But then here's one. A lot of times these are uh, made of gold. Service, 30, <clears throat> 30 years agriculture. There's another one. No stones in it, but my guess is it's made of gold. Let's look on the back here. Yes, 10K. So it's not even, it's, this is a solid gold, 10K, 10 karat solid gold. And this is probably not more than a gram, okay? But one gram of 10 karat gold today is about $25.50. So if somebody just wanted to buy this for the gold weight, this is worth $25.50. He paid $1 for this entire bag. Perfect. All right, last couple of things that are not tools, and then, or not jewelry rather, and then we'll get into the jewelry, okay? So these uh, are... Just like what I was messing with earlier, uh, similar anyways. And I'll show you these at the end. This has a brand, it looks like a brand, or maybe these are initials of a person, but Quack, K-W-A-A-K. -A -A um, and you can see that this tip is bent, either intentionally or accidentally. I'm guessing maybe intentionally as a way to kind of to get in. But these are oyster knives. They're made of steel. They're heavy. This is probably, you know, a pound in my hand. Um, solid metal awesome and this is what they use to open up and shuck oysters with um oh this also says quack on it and this is uh what they call uh what do they call that folks rainbow steel something like that it's iridescent um it's a certain thing that they do i think it's a wash maybe that they put on the steel uh, some sort of acid or something that, that gives it that patina uh but those are definitely going to sell that's fantastic okay throwing those over there now let's get into some of this jewelry here um, I know if you're like me, you're dying to know what's in this. So I'm going to wait a minute. <laughs> I'm going to wait and make you and make no, no offense, but I, I want, I want you to watch these videos. You know, it's what helps us. It's what helps the channel grow. And, uh, and we want you around and we want to teach you. So, oh, cool. Okay. So let's see what, what do we got into here? First off, we got this little brooch. If I turn it over the very bottom there, uh, where's my poker or my pointer here? You go right there. You can see it. It says uh, SU is a manufacturer 925 
Thailand. So this is made in Thailand, but 925 means sterling silver. So that is a silver brooch. Next up, we have another uh, one here. These are, uh, I, uh, Got, definitely got some tarnish on the inside, so I can't tell if that has a mark or not, but it looks and feels very much like the same metal as over here. And even though it's got a yellowish color on either side, don't be alarmed by that. That can still be sterling silver, or it could be gold mixed with silver. But my guess is that's also a sterling silver brooch. Okay, whoop, I just dropped one here. Rusty, come on now. All right, we got three Christmas trees here. Again, this looks and feels like silver to me. The uh, tarnish on the back of it has all the telltale tail signs of silver. It is a brooch. It's also got these hangers, so you can put it as a pendant if you want to. And then down here in the very bottom, right here, I don't know if you can see it very well with the light. You can't, but it has a brand name, and it says, I think that it says Best, B-E-S-T, which is a costume jewelry brand name. I would need to double check to see if that brand does make sterling silver uh, jewelry or not. Okay, now this is sort of ugly. If I rotate it, it's like a, it's like a, kind of like a brassy color, right? Definitely fake stones, very obviously kind of ugly fake stones, opaque. They are prong set. Here's one that looks like could be actually a real stone or at least glass this time and not plastic. If I keep rotating it. Another one just sort of got that, that round bezel around there, that bevel there. A couple other stones. What do you pay for this? $3. So if I look on the inside, do I see any sort of... Okay, well, here's something. Right in here. Yep, there it is, brand name. Sorelli. Well, now that I see this is Sorelli, I'm familiar with this brand. This is probably anywhere from a $30 to a $50 bangle because of the brand name. Even though I was pretty skeptical, uh, it's kind of it's kind of ugly, folks. I just and again, this is just my taste. Um, I'm not walking around wearing bangles. Uh, don't get me wrong, but uh, I just didn't love the look of it. But that brand name sells. They have some decent stuff, so that was a good pick uh, for him. He clearly did what he was supposed to do, which is search and research. Don't just take it at face value. Don't say, "Ooh, that's god awful. That's ugly," and walk away. No, you're gonna be leaving leaving stuff on the table. $4. The brand is Castle Cliff. I was excited at first because I thought, oh my goodness, did he find some um, coral, some large coral earrings set in, you know, 18 karat gold is what they look like. And that's what they're made to look like, folks. So these are probably some type of a, a lucite or a plastic um, and, you know, gold tone. And the, the brand name is Castle Cliff. These are definitely worth more than $4. Make it more like $24 or maybe even $34 for those because of the brand name. Here we have a ring. We got probably, you can tell it's plastic. It's already wearing on the top. Looks like copper. On the bottom, that kind of design is very indicative of a cheap piece. Well, well, you just, are you kidding me? Just dropping things left and right. Okay, so I got it here. What does it say on the inside? Oh, okay. Well, look at that. 12 carat, or no, 14K. No, 12. 12 carat GF shank. That means, and you can see that this is a very gold color and the rest of it's not, um, this is a 12 karat gold filled ring portion, like the, the band is 12 karat gold filled. And that just means it's plated in 12 karat gold, but the inside is some sort of a cheaper alloy. All right, another nice uh, uh, pair of costume earrings, beautiful white. They don't, they're not iridescent. They don't look like pearl, but they got good design on the outside. He paid $5 for these. And I see why. These are Julian uh, uh, Haskell. Okay, Haskell. Those th things sell really well. Again, this is probably a $25 to $30 pair of earrings, possibly more, given the brand name. And if you put you know these together, you know maybe even more if you get stuff in a lot. You never know. Um, okay, what do we have here? We got a $5 necklace. Mom, man, oh man, you know, Mother's Day is coming up. I should do, do a lot of all the mother-related stuff in here. I bet we'd sell it. So this little tag here, do you see this little, not the loop, but the little flat piece connecting those loops? Yep. 
there is, it says JJT, below it it says 925 Italy. That right there, when you see that even from a distance where you look up close, a lot of times if it has that particular type of a link, it's going to be made of silver. And it's going to say Italy. It's got a gold tone on it. It's got some stones that are probably cubic zirconia because it's not gold. They'd probably be diamonds if it were gold since it's... And then on the back here too, you see that? It does say 925. There's a little bit of greenness in that probably because of whatever was mixed in with the gold on the outside or whatever made the gold tone has a little bit of green because sterling silver doesn't really do that that much um all right good five dollars for that that will that will sell for more than five dollars saint elizabeth ann seton and it says italy at the bottom this is some sort of a uh, a charm for like a bracelet or maybe a pendant for a necklace that is definitely um, religious in nature, probably Catholic, all right, because it's talking about a saint. Um, here is an interesting little necklace. Um, I'm not seeing anything. All right, I'm not seeing anything on that. Maybe it wasn't magnetic, and so he wanted to bring it back and test it. Um, if it's magnetic, it's not going to be made of gold or silver. Uh, if it's not magnetic, it doesn't mean it is gold or silver, but it means there's a better chance. Here is a nice little piece. It looks like a, looks like a synthetic pearl to me. If you look at that, it, it's like milky and does nothing. They hit one side and it's like, bam, red fire. If you pull it in here, you're going to see a brand name, Coventry. Sarah Coventry, it is a ring. It's made to look like vintage uh, fine jewelry, but it is costume jewelry. And people will buy Sarah Coventry stuff for sure. All right, a couple of earrings here. They look like silver just to the eye. And they have these little points here in the top, middle, and the bottom two points there of marcasite. That is... A mineral that they cut kind of jagged like that in order for the light to reflect off of it. It's nice. Um, you see it uh, also oftentimes in jewelry, in silver jewelry, mixed with onyx and uh, amethyst because those are also popular stones used at the time. And then these pearls. These are these are faux pearls. I don't believe that these are uh, real pearls. You know, they might be but they're glued in there. They probably have a little post in the middle too <clears throat> of the metal that are connecting those. Clip earrings. That's nice. Here is a little bracelet. Okay, you see that same similar kind of ring there? It's not exactly the same look, but it's very similar. And again, right on that, you're seeing 925. Another sterling silver bracelet. Okay, here's another nice little ring. Pretty prong set. I don't they just don't look like real gemstones to me. They look too clear. So I think that these are either synthetic or they're glass. You got this uh, discoloration from bright yellow to like <clears throat> a, a dull silver color. So this is going to be some sort of either gold tone over silver or this is gonna, not even going to be silver. It's going to be. Um, and I don't see a maker's mark and I don't see a purity mark. So my guess is it's just a straight up costume piece. You must have got it for a good deal. Somebody will buy that just because it's colorful. Cool. <clears throat> this has all the hallmarks of being a custom or like an artisan piece. It's not a, a common design. These are links, actually, folks. This is a bracelet, and these link together in little pieces. You could actually disassemble this one piece at a time pretty easily. But it has a very comfortable feel, It's and it got an attractive look. Um, my guess is this is sterling silver. It has all the hallmarks of it. $3.50. He either knew it was, and I'm not going to bother spending a ton of time looking for a mark. I don't see one, but uh, he probably knew it was or, or highly suspected that it was and took a gamble on three fifty. dollars We do that sometimes when it's not a whole lot of money because uh, a lot of times uh, we end up being correct. And if not, we can throw it in a jewelry jar and sell it uh, with a lot of other stuff. Another Sarah Cove, Sarah Coventry. We already saw a piece like that. <clears throat> Beautiful piece. I was excited. I was hoping that this would be a gold-filled vintage piece because it looks just like stuff that we come across all the time that isn't marked but is gold-filled. Um, getting the last few pieces here together, what we have. Also looks like it could be a gold-filled piece. It could be another just costume piece. I don't see any markings on the back. <clears throat> what does the clasp look like? Nothing on the back. Kind of a pretty design on the front, but a little bit, um, you know, a little bit thin, uh, a little bit superficial. 
which is uh, usually finer jewelry is a little bit more sturdy because they want it to, to they don't want it falling apart right after you buy it you're going to bring it back right costume jewelry though they build that in the cost they don't care another piece pretty heavy i don't see a mark but two bucks if this is sterling silver uh man this is probably i don't know 50 or 60 grams here which would be 30 to 40 dollars and silver weight, if this is just in silver weight, if this ends up being sterling silver. And if not, $2, somebody, you can get your money back on that pretty easily. Last couple of things here. <clears throat> this, I do believe, is a vintage piece. Um, it is not marked, not super old, because this clasp, as you can see here, this, this little tumbler that rolls over and locks it in place and rolls back, those, uh, those aren't super old. Those aren't like... 1800s or anything a lot of these pins if they're really old all they'll do is have a little hook that sticks out like this and then the pin will fold underneath of it and there's nothing to wrap around it to hold it in place <clears throat> that's actually a good point you should do research on clasps for necklaces and uh and and these uh these clasps as well on brooches and pins because if you know as technology advanced people did away with the old uh, way of doing things and they started to implement the new things that were m not only probably better in a lot of ways more secure but also more popular and so um if someone's trying to sell you this let's say and they say it's from 1850 and you look over and you see this clasp on here you're gonna if you know your history and you know when uh, these different patents changed then you would say mm -mm, only one of two things is happening here either they have that date wrong or a newer clasp has been put on this thing later on, so it's been uh, modified in some way. Always do your research on that stuff if you aren't quite sure. Here is a, a, a lizard brooch with these gemstones in it that uh, looks like a lot of, um, like a peridot, uh, which is kind of like a very, very light green color. It's beautiful. It looks looks like silver to me. It's got to be fairly new because it has not tarnished if it is if it is silver. And it is, 925. You can see it right there. Pretty, pretty obviously on the bottom there. What do you pay? <clears throat> $8. Okay, so he paid up for this because he was pretty sure somebody would like to look at that. It's not missing any stones. This is probably a $20 or $30, maybe even more, uh, piece of silver right there. Uh, okay, on to the last goodies. All right, we have... A beautiful little, I can tell this is, at the very least, this is gold filled. It is vintage. <clears throat> it may be uh, solid gold. Oh, man, that is gorgeous. Look at that little bird just kind of flying by these little twigs in this very ornate carved outer, outer uh, case here. What I do notice is something odd here in the middle is that this middle section I think was originally made in order to uh, blank. So this middle part would have been blank and they would have brought it someplace and had a script initials put onto here, uh, monogram it uh, uh, for personal use. So this might have been given as a gift to someone or they bought it and then they had a jeweler put their initials on it. But you can see somebody's come in here and very crudely and rudely damaged this. They have carved and scraped up what the original uh, letters would have been. I can't even tell what they were at one point in time. So that definitely, unfortunately, that devalues it somewhat. I don't know what uh, Peach has paid for it, uh, but let's see here. I'm gonna try to, um, I'm gonna try to open this up here and see what we're looking at. <clears throat> All right, so we are looking at a Waltham pocket watch. Uh, they have the blue hands, so we're talking uh, teens or 20s, probably. And I, you know, listen, if you know better than I do, I apologize. This is my best guesswork. I, I read it at one time. I just didn't commit it to memory for some reason. So, uh, again, this is like I was talking about with the clasps and the technology. There was a certain po point in time in which the hands on these pocket watches were made in this iridescent blue steel. Okay, prior to when they started initiating it, they had not even made it. Once they started manufacturing it, for whatever reason, it took off in the watch industry and they started using them. So uh, if somebody tries to sell you this watch and says it's from 1850s, you can say no. 
unless somebody came in after the fact and put those, you know, later technology, uh, you know, hands in there. Uh, we got a number here. This number <clears throat> does not relate to the movement of the watch, but rather um, the case itself, um, I believe. Um, the watch itself, um, give me a moment. I'm going to try to take them back off, and we're going to see what the movement says. Phase Montauk number one. Okay, <clears throat> so you can look up these cases just like you can look up movement numbers, and it'll tell you. My guess is this is either a 10 or a 12 karat gold filled pocket watch. If it were solid gold, it would say 10k, 12k, 14k, right around here. You would see it. Um, the fact that it doesn't say it means it's probably gold filled, right? And they're not required to necessarily put gold filled on here. American Waltham Watch Company, gorgeous little thing, 15 jewels. So a 17, a 19, a 21, a 23, okay, those would be better because they, the more jewels, the better time it keeps and the more, uh, you know, just the better construction. But 15 jewels is not that bad. Um, and then you've got a number here, 9924885, and that would indicate the movement itself. You can look those up and generally find the value on that beautiful piece, if only because of this intricate design on the front. Finally, let's see what you got in here. Wow, a nice little ring. It's dainty. That's probably a gram or less uh, in gold weight. Um, these look like, these could be diamonds on either side. They don't necessarily have to be. Perhaps a very light colored topaz or possibly a light aquamarine. Although um, I think the aquamarine part's unlikely. I looked in this, it is a 10 karat gold ring. So 10 karat gold means a lower carat weight of gold uh, a lower purity of gold, rather. Um, and uh, that means that these don't have to be super high-quality stones. Again, the higher the gold content, 18 karat, 22 karat, uh, these would be really nice notes. But uh, I'll go down and, do my, and use my tester. I don't know what, I think he said he paid $30 for this. Which, you know, for the gold weight, it's probably only about $25 to $30, so that's about spot on. But you've got this case and the stones, and for someone who likes a, like a, a very low-profile ring, it is it is fairly attractive. Definitely older style, but uh, people would like that still. But what I was going to say is about this little box here. If you think it's going to enhance the sale of the ring, leave it in the box. If not... Look up just vintage jewelry boxes, and you might be astonished to find what people are paying simply for these little cases. Old ones, leather ones that have names of places in them. Uh, you might be able to sell this box for $30. I don't know, but I'm just saying uh, people will buy these things because they'll want to find an original box for a piece of jewelry, or maybe someone has an antique piece of jewelry and they want to make it look older than it is, or I don't know what. There's all kinds of reasons. But you can buy those and sell those just like you can buy and sell jewelry. Are you still here? As promised, let me show you some of these vintage, refinished oyster knives. Well, I'm out here once again working on these oyster knives. I've got uh, a bunch here that were made out of um, like a rebar, basically, look like. But um, I'll tell you what, uh, man, I've been spent a lot of time. Uh, here's a bunch of nice ones that I, I finished. Um, but let me just here, let me try to. Sorry about that. I'm just going to bring it out here in the light so you can see it. It makes a huge difference. Look at this. Look how rusted this old buster is but then like as i start to polish her up man look how nice that looks oh i got a nice collection i'll show them to you as soon as i get done all right folks nice and shiny got them the first round of clean and done you can see that some of these it revealed the names of the manufacturers uh, jay stortz and sons um a couple of others here but uh, pretty awesome just super shiny and slick in the sunlight. Uh, get these, I uh, gave them a nice, uh, you know, gentle rinse in some WD-40, and we're gonna let them dry a little bit, um, let that soak in, kind of polish her off, and uh, move on to the last six or eight I have of these rebar ones. Thanks so much for joining us today, folks, and if you've stuck around this long, 
You're one of my favorite cousins. Come back soon. We're going to have more videos this week. Take care. Good luck hunting. Let's go find some treasures. Busty.